up everyone? Welcome back to Undialed. You know, I get a lot of questions. Me personally, I get a lot of questions and a lot of them are, Will, how do you do this? To be honest with you, there is no simple way of learning this. I have spent years on fingerboard tricks and a lot of these tricks do take a lot of time and effort. So, if your only trick is this, I'm gonna teach you five easy, basic fingerboard tricks you can learn right now. Right now, over the course of this video, you can learn these tricks. So the first trick that I'm gonna teach you today is the shove it. Not the pop shove it, but the shove it. And this trick looks like this. So this trick is pretty easy. The finger position on this trick is with two fingers. I don't wanna see any three finger fingerboarding. I want to see two finger fingerboarding. And basically where you put your finger is one in the direct center and one right on the edge of the tail. What you want to do with this trick is basically flick behind with your middle finger and push a little bit forward with your pointer finger. You want to make the board go around in a 180 motion. This trick is going to be a lot easier stationary than moving. But once you get it pretty good stationary, I'd recommend trying it in a moving motion. If you're having a little bit of difficulty learning this trick, I'd recommend doing it fakey. And what that means is instead of rolling the fingerboard forwards, you want to roll the fingerboard backwards, keeping your fingers in the exact same positions they were in. By rolling it backwards, the momentum of the board shifts forward and I just find it to be a little bit easier. And that leads me to the next trick, nolly shove-its. Nolly shove-its are very similar to shove-its, except you're doing it in reverse. So let me show you what that looks like. On a normal shove-it, your finger position looks like this, but on a nolly shove-it, you wanna move it forward. So that way your pointer finger is the one on the tail and your middle finger is the one in the middle of the board. You wanna take what you've learned from the shove-it and implement it into the nolly shove-it. And that looks like this. So this trick is like a reverse of a shove it. So everything is just kind of backwards. You want to push forward with your middle finger and your pointer finger, you pull back. So just like a shove it, except in reverse. Now this trick is mostly all in your pointer finger. Um, your middle finger isn't really doing much, but it helps if you push it forward just a little bit. So I mentioned in the first trick that if you're having a little bit of difficulties, you can try a fakie shove it. And this leads me into the next trick called a fakey big spin, which is very similar to a fakey shove it, except it has a little bit more of a twist to it. A fakey big spin looks like that. Basically what it is, is it is a fakey shove it and a revert, but you do it all at the same time. So sped up, it looks like this. When you're doing this trick, you wanna use a little bit more force when you're scooping the board, so that way it'll travel a little bit more than shove it. When it's past that point of over shove it, you wanna put your fingers on and revert it to finish out the trick. So understanding what you gotta do with your wrist when learning this trick can be a little bit tricky when you're first learning it. And that's because you kinda of have to move your wrist in a, in a funny way, or not super funny, but <laughs> If you've never really fingerboarded before, it can seem kind of funny. One way to practice the motion of how you need to turn is by rolling fakie and pivoting over. So that way you kind of put your hand in that weird position. Now when you do a fakie big spin, it's basically just doing this, but with an extra shove it. This may seem like a super basic trick and not that amazing, but trust me, when you're doing tricks and lines, it's a really good trick to have because it just works and it's pretty easy once you learn it. So this next trick that we're learning right now is, I don't actually really know the name of it. What it kind of relates to is a hospital flip and that looks like this. But this trick is kind of a ground version of that. It's like a ground hospital flip and it looks like this. Basically, what you do is you, you use your index finger to flip the board over and then flick it back over, but impossible. Flick it over like a kickflip, and then you flick it back like an impossible. It's a very simple trick, but it feels really cool to land. If you're having troubles with this trick, make sure when you flip the board over, 
it flips over and gets either equivalent with your knuckle or a little bit past your knuckle. So that way you'll have enough leverage to flip it over again. If this trick is just getting too easy for you, you can mix it up a little bit and you can add in some reverts. And that looks like this. That hard. What a revert is, is basically when you force the board to do a 180 on the ground with, without actually jumping. So try throwing those in and it actually makes it kind of difficult. So I've actually been lying this whole video. I've been capping. So I said at the beginning of this video that you'll be able to learn all these tricks right now. Um, and this last trick may take you a little bit of time, but it's the next step in learning fingerboard tricks if you actually want to learn a cool fingerboard trick. And that next trick is called an ollie. I'm sure you've heard of it before. So the ollie was actually a really difficult trick for me to learn. It probably took me like a year to learn it to the point that I could do it every try. Um, and I think that the main reason why it took me so long is I was using really tiny tech decks and those were just kind of hard to use. Um, fortunately, I have a, a great fingerboard now. This is a Yellowwood fingerboard. Um, this is actually my signature deck. So if you guys want to support me and Yellowwood, here's my deck. These fingerboards can be kind of expensive, but you know what? They actually sell pretty decent fingerboards now. Like Tech Deck makes pretty decent fingerboards. So this whole process I think will be a little bit easier for you because the equipment in 2020 is a little bit better than it was in 2010. So the first thing that you gotta realize about the Ollie is that it's gonna take some time. You're not gonna learn this trick in two seconds. You know what, if you do, that's more, more power to you. But be realistic with yourself. This trick might take a little bit of time. So the first thing you gotta know about this trick is finger position. And finger position looks like this. You're gonna put one finger right in the center of the board and maybe even scoot it up just a tiny bit so your, your fingernail is just hanging over a, a tad and your other finger is on the tail. I like to put my finger on the edge of the tail or around the back of the tail so that way I get maximum pop. The next thing that you'll need to uh, learn an ollie is a chair, actually. You'll, you'll need a chair. And this is why. So you want to sit uh, so that way your your legs are in front of you at like a 90 degree. As if you're sitting, you know, like anywhere. So what you want to do is you want to get whichever leg you feel better with. Um, I'm right handed, so I'm going to use my right leg. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice ollies on my leg. And this, this probably seems kind of ridiculous if you don't fingerboard, but I actually learned this a long time ago from a fingerboard wizard. And it really helped me out learning the basics of how to actually do an ollie. So what you got to do is you basically got to learn this motion. You got to learn how to pop it back and bring it down. And basically what that does is that allows you to hold the board without actually like holding it. You wanna get good at this motion of basically ollieing, but flipping it upside down and bring it over. And the better and better and better you get at that, you want to try not flipping it upside down. So try going straight up. Try to not go upside down at all. This will really help you with your tricks. The reason that this will help you over just doing it on a table is because the way that your leg is shaped. When you're trying this trick, the curvature of your leg will allow you to bring the board back farther than a table would allow you to, meaning that you'll be able to do this trick just a little bit slower than as if you were doing it on a table. You can do this trick in kind of like slow motion. So once you have this good, let's move to the table. So when you're doing the ollie, what you basically want to do is you want to pop the board and use your front finger to slide forward to counteract the motion so that way your board becomes balanced in the air and you're able to land it. At first, I found it to be maybe a little bit easier if you popped it upside down and brought it over. And that will just allow you to get board feel while you're in the air and it makes, it makes the muscle memory a little bit easier when you're first initially learning it. So the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna find a goal. You wanna find something that you wanna ollie up onto. You wanna make your goals pretty reasonable. Um, right now I'm gonna use this, uh, I think it's like a less than a half an inch tall ledge and I'm gonna practice ollieing up this. It may take you a little bit to really understand how to do it at first, but if you just practice that motion, just practice it over and over and over and over, eventually you'll have the trick just fine. Once you're able to do your first goal, move on to another goal. 
and make the elevation just a little bit higher and a little bit higher and a little bit higher until you get to the point where you can ollie up anything that you want. You get to the point where you can basically ollie up anything. All right guys, so the final thing that I'm gonna say about the ollie is uh, practice, practice, practice. Try going fakey with the ollies, try going super fast with the ollies, try lots of different things. You know, the wonderful thing about fingerboarding is you can't get hurt doing it. So go crazy with it. Try literally crazy ollies everywhere because I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna have to go pick up your fingerboard. If you want a more advanced tutorial or more in-depth tutorial on maybe harder tricks, um, then comment down below because that's something that I could definitely do. This video was once again intended for people who are not good at fingerboarding. If you're good at fingerboarding and you're sitting there like, well, these tricks are really easy. Well, you must mean you're a pretty good fingerboarder then. If you're not good at fingerboarding and you're watching this and you're super confused, well, just put in some practice and you won't be confused because all these tricks just take a little bit of effort and I'm sure that you could learn at least the first four tricks over the course of this video. They're probably the easiest fingerboard trick. Anyway guys, we have more fingerboard park building videos coming soon. This place is getting insane. If you guys haven't seen the fingerboard building videos where we build basically this entire room, go check out the Undialed Fingerboard Park playlist because we have really entertaining content in there and it's something that you could do right now. Cause I know you're not doing anything. Make sure to go to undialed.co and shop at Yellowwood and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.